According to the Pew Research Center, every day for the next decade, 10,000 Americans will turn 65. Many studies show that about 70 percent of people over 65 will need some sort of long-term medical care, but the majority of them won't be able to afford it. Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly and joining me is Congressman Ami Barra from California. Thank you so much for being with us today. Glad to be on, Candace. So this is really a typical situation that you have people who are taking care of kids and taking care of their parents. What are you hearing stories about most of in terms of those types of people who are trying to balance this because they don't have long-term care? You know, I saw it a lot when I was a doctor and that's my profession, but as I'm traveling around my district and talking to folks all across this country, you know, a lot of middle-class families that are just feeling this squeeze, right? They've got kids that want to go to college, but they've also got aging parents. So, you know, we're trying to come up with solutions that make it a little bit easier and try to relieve some of that burden. And what are some of the solutions? Because people, I mean, they can't count on Medicaid or Medicare. I mean, to some extent, but it, it runs out. And then we look at the savings that people have, and I mean, we're talking maybe up to 80, 90,000 per year that it could potentially cost for someone's care. Well, the bill that we're introducing hopefully gives them a chance to save in a tax-deferred way. So, you know, over time, hopefully they can use tax incentives to, to save and, you know, accrue those savings so they're there when they need to care for their parents or care for themselves, actually. Now, what do you think, though, down the line, the world is going to look like in terms of the impact of all of these people that are turning 65? Because certainly it's long-term care, but I would imagine that there are other repercussions that we're going to have to deal with because of this the, the aging society that we have. Yeah, people are living longer, you know, we're coming up with life-saving therapies and, and extending life. So we've got to deal with all of this. And, you know, a lot of people are going to be living in their homes. So how do we make it easier for in-home support? How do we use um, our policy to make it easier for those folks to care for their own parents and for the folks that are living independently to continue to care for themselves. In terms of what you're proposing, what are the numbers, the breakdown in terms of how somebody can actually perhaps save a little more when it comes to taxes and incentives like that? What might someone down the line, if they had, you know, if everything goes through, be able to, to have more of in terms of dealing with an aging parent? I, I mean, the thought here is over time, if, even if you just put $25 a month, uh, aside over 10, 15, 20 years, that can accrue in a tax deferred way where, you know, you can save, you know, $100,000, $200,000, depending on what, what you're saving. So you've got a little bit to help because, you know, Social Security isn't going to cover everything. Medicare is not going to cover everything. And this is just a way for, for families and those parents and those individuals over time to care for their loved ones. And what are people saying on both sides? I'm sure that this is something that people would support on both sides because a lot of people do have aging parents. Yeah, this should be a bipartisan bipartisan um, no-brainer and, and we'll introduce it as a bipartisan bill you know we will we expect to get a lot of support from Democrats and Republicans because again when you're caring for your parents you're not looking at this as a Democrat or Republican you're looking at this as as a son or daughter absolutely what are people doing now in order to deal with the situation because people are really squeezing to make ends meet you, you know they're just they're stressed right I mean we saw it in our own family when um, my wife's parents you know they were aged aging and um, my wife's mother had a stroke and you know just the stress that you know her father was going through but then also the stress for us you know being um, you know they're down in Los Angeles we're up in Sacramento so trying to help care for them and you know that they they were fortunate enough to both be teachers so they had their, their their pensions that that helped them but a lot of families don't have those resources absolutely and again they're not just dealing with their parents they're dealing with a child maybe who's even in daycare or the college tuition kicks in and it's just quite a bit of money how much money are we talking about potentially that it could cost somebody in terms of long-term care and the average of facility costs out there if you, know, you, if you need to go that route? You know, with the people living longer um, and, and with therapies we have, you're potentially talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. All right. Well, I want to thank so much for giving, being with us today. I know that there are a lot of people out there who certainly this is an issue that it affects them. Good to see you. Absolutely. It's good to see you, Candace. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly.